Dance of History. Welcome back to another episode of Knights of History. And today we're, we are going to be continuing our armor series. Last week we did Gamerson, and this week, or I should say last week, sorry for the missed upload last week. Some stuff was going on, and I wasn't able to upload a video. I apologize, guys. But we're back, and we're going to be on a new regular schedule of one video a week, hopefully on Fridays, and uh, that's what we should be expecting. Anyway, back to today's episode. Today we're going to be talking about Shade Mail. Ah uh, yes, chainmail armor. There's a lot to say about this, so we're going to get into it. Alright, first of all, what was chainmail armor? Well, if you don't know, chainmail is a flexible armor that's made of a bunch of interlocking metal rings. But some important notes to make here are that not all chainmail was made the same. In fact, there were two types of chainmail that were used historically, but we're going to get into that later. For now, we're going to talk about when it was used and why. So it was used through most of the medieval period, and even a little bit prior, in, well, into the Roman era, if you will. Um, they used it there. But it's well, it's well known in the medieval period, particularly prior to the por prior to the 14th century. You see, after the 14th century especially, is when plate armor really began to pick up steam. And metallurgy was advancing to the point where people were wearing up to full plate armor in the later medieval period. But for most of the time, people were using and chainmail was cheap, relatively, and easy to repair if it was broken. And it provided really adequate protection, especially when worn over a gamberson. Um, I'll get into all the details of that later as to why those two armors really worked well together and why they were extremely protective and used through most of the medieval period. Chainmail armor was worn all over the body at one point. But they were usually broken down into different pieces. It wasn't necessarily a suit. And here are some terms that you might want to know if you're interested. One is a halberd. A halberd is a chainmail shirt that generally goes down to the knees. So it would go from here, it would go the, all the way down the body. They were generally longer and protected from attacks through the upper leg, which was very helpful. Um, especially if you had a gamberson that also went down that far. Those two should be worn together. Uh, the other, other uh, I'm probably butching this pronunciation, but a hammergen which I apologize for my pronunciation, but Hammerton was a, uh, what you think of as a normal shirt. It would go down to about the waist. And that's what you would say, well, that's a chainmail shirt, because it is literally a shirt made out of chainmail. Um, and that could be worn on any number of things, especially, namely, if you had a gamberton underneath it. Um, some other pieces were the sabatons, which were, you can think of almost as like chainmail socks, if you will a type of protection that would go over the foot to protect from any attacks from the knees. Or down low, I should say. Um, final piece of uh, chainmail armor that's pretty important is the mittens, or gloves, if you will. And it was essentially leather gloves, generally, with chainmail on top of them, not simply a glove with chainmail, because chainmail isn't super comfortable. Hence, the gamut is worn underneath it, and the protective value it adds. So, the two... Uh, linkage types of chainmail. The two main ones that were used historically, the two main ones that were used historically were riveted and butted mail. It's important to note here that butted mail was not used a whole lot um, in combat. It was fairly ceremonial and was used often in Japan. Riveted mail, on the other hand, was used throughout most of, if not all, of Europe. Before we start talking about the types of mail, though, I would like to give a huge shout out to one of my viewers who let me use a chainmail shirt that he's been working on, or a hammergen, if you're going to use the technical term, that he's been working on for quite some time to give a visual example of what chainmail looks like. Now, this is a little heavy. Chainmail was not, it was actually one of the heavier pieces of armor, and you would usually have a belt or something holding up around your waist to take a lot of the weight off of it upside down. I believe. He's probably going to call me out in the comments like, hey, you're putting it on wrong. It's not finished, so I can't tell what the sleeves are. Um, but you can see that it would cover, this would be a shirt so you go on both sides, but this is just the front piece. You can see here, this is a butted mail. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus on it here. So you can see the rings are butted together 
they're only being held together by the force applied against each other, meaning it's relatively easy to pierce with a sword, and in fact can be torn apart if pulled hard enough. So, thank you. I appreciate this. This gives a really good visual example, of course, we're still going to have pictures and such on the screen as always, but this is a really good representation of what it's like. So I'm going to put this back. So this is, like I said, budded male. Uh, so budded male was used in Japan mainly, and it was used, like I said, for ceremonial purposes, especially because it was easier to make than riveted male. Riveted male, let me get my cheat sheet. Riveted male was made similarly, except every single ring, instead of being pinched onto another ring, actually had a small rivet, or you think of it as like a small nail, put into it to hold it together. So the rings were very, very strong, and were impossible to cut through, and very, very hard to pierce. And when you combine that, a chainmail um, hambergen or halberd on top of a gambeson, not only are you resisting anything biting into your skin and actually killing you, but it won't even pierce the mail. And if it does, or if it does, it just if it's a cut to your shoulder, it won't go through your arm, it will not go through the mail, and a lot of that force will be distributed into the padded gambeson you're wearing underneath the mail, which provides a whole other layer of protection and was extremely effective and used through most of the medieval period. And even when they were wearing full plate armor, maybe not full uh, halberds were worn under the, uh, the plate armor because the plate was protecting, but they'd often have small chainmail pieces of armor in the weak spots, like the neck or the joints, or areas that could often be struck at and couldn't necessarily be covered easily in plate. So those were some points on chainmail armor. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. It was just a short little sweet video on chainmail, what it was, the types of it, and where it was used. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode of Knights of History. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.